Notes uh, in the live stream. Also die Notizen sind im live stream. Okay, before we begin, let's open the door. Vater, ich will danken für diesen neuen Morgen. Bitte hilf uns, dass wir jetzt dein Wort auf der Erde halten können. Dass unser Weg mit dir enger werden mag. Und hilf uns, dass wir uns auf The idols that are lurking in, in our hearts. Bitte hilf uns und wirf all die Götzen heraus, die in unserem Herzen sind. And please remove those false concepts that we would be a holy temple for you. And bitte, um, lass uns ein heiliger Tempel für dich sein. And please remove all the false concepts. And um, nimm all die falschen Konzepte weg. And please bless also now Brother Mark when he leads the class. And bitte segne jetzt auch Brother Mark when er die Klasse führt. And help everyone who is watching and really who are here that we would understand your word. Bitte hilf jedem, der zuschaut, dass er dein Wort verstehen kann. In Jesus' name, Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Okay, so yesterday we were looking at this um, this pattern. Also gestern haben wir uns dieses Muster angeschaut. The the midnight cry message is the loud cry message. Also dass diese Mitternachtsruf oder dieser laute Ruf ist. Which is the third angel's message. Was die dritte Engelsbotschaft ist. And it's the last one in message before the close of probation. Das ist die letzte Warnungsbotschaft vor dem Ende der Gnadenzeit. Okay, so, and <coughs> over the last several months, um, und um, über die letzten paar Monaten, the Lord has been shown us that the time of trouble, or the things that you see in the time of trouble, can also be found in the time of peace. Da hat uns der Herr gezeigt, dass die Dinge, die wir eben auch finden können in der Zeit des Trübsal, auch in der Zeit des Friedens sind. And I don't profess to understand why that is, but it, but it's a fact. It's shown us in many, many different ways. And I don't know to understand why that is, but it's a fact, and it's been shown us over and over again. Okay, so ours is not to human reason against those things. We just lay them out, and eventually it will become clear why those things are the way they are. And we should not be with menschlichen ja, Ständnis das versuchen aufzuklären, sondern wir sollen das eben einfach auslegen und dann wird der Herr uns das eines Tages dann aufzeigen, was das bedeutet. Okay, so, um, now, this waymark here, the, the mid midnight cry waymark, so diese Wegmarke hier, die Mitternachtsruf Wegmarke, we used to put many things here that we find out now at, at the end here in this um, time this little ten that's here at the end. Dann wir viele Dinge hier hin platzieren, wo wir eigentlich jetzt verstehen, dass es hier ist in dieser kleinen zehn. Okay, so I wanted to. I I thought much about this, and I thought, well, how do we sustain this waymark now? Und ich habe viel darüber nachgedacht und habe mir dann gedacht, ja, wie können wir jetzt noch diese Wegmarke aufrechterhalten? Okay, and what I want to show you is because yesterday it was showing you that the midnight cry from he here to the close of probation is also illustrated from here to here, right? Und gestern habe ich euch auch gezeigt, dass diese Zeit hier von Mitternachtsruf bis zur finalen Untersuchung. No, 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 not this time. I'm saying the midnight cry from here to here is also illustrated from, from here to here. Der Mitternachtsruf von hier bis hier 
ist eben auch hier illustriert. Okay, it's both shown as the same thing. It's both shown as a, a, a message that's empowered, that's a, like a last one and bef before the door closes. Und das zeigt uns eben dasselbe, dass da eine Botschaft ist, die wir eben bekräftigt wird und die gegeben wird, bevor die Tür sich schließt. Okay, so anyway, I, I want to bring lots of things that we are familiar with and I want to um, I want to, to lay out a pattern and then we'll let God try and explain it to us. Und ich möchte jetzt viele Dinge bringen, die uns bekannt sind und ich möchte dann ein Muster eben das auslegen und mir der Herr muss dann das um, zu verstehen geben. Okay, so let's go to the first quote from Ellie Writings 85. Und gehen wir jetzt zum ersten Zitat von Friedrich Schöpfen. Okay. It says, this view was given in 1847, when there were but very few of the Advent brethren observing the Sabbath. So she's, gonna, she's referring now to 1848, right? When the Sabbath became the final test, right? In, in their time. Und sie bezieht sich jetzt auf 1848, wo eben der Sabbat zum finalen Test für sie wurde in dieser Zeit. Okay, this view was given in 1847, when there were but very few of the Advent brethren observing the Sabbath, and of these but few supposed that its observance was of sufficient importance to draw a line between the people of God and unbelievers. Now, the fulfillment of that view is beginning to be seen. The commencement of that time of trouble, here mentioned, does not refer to the time when the plagues shall begin to be poured out, but to a short period just before they are poured out, while Christ is in the sanctuary. At that time, while the work of salvation is closing, trouble will be coming on the earth. Right? So she uses these things very specifically. At that time, the time of trouble here mentioned. Right? Sie benutzt eben diese Dinge hier sehr spezifisch und sagt eben, dieser Zeit, also dieser Zeit, die hier erwähnt ist. It says, and the nations will be angry, yet held in check, so as not to prevent the work of the third angel. Right? So, we went through yesterday, what, what, is, what message is the midnight cry pointing to? What is it illustrating? Und wir sind da gestern durchgegangen, auf was weiß eben diese Mitternachtsbuch hin? It's the third angel, right? Das ist der dritte Engel. Um, At that time, the latter rain, or refreshing from the presence of the Lord, will come. So the latter rain, what does it also represent that we did yesterday? Und der Spätregen, was stellt er auch noch da? The exceeding bright light. Das überaus helle Licht. So, now in the Sunday Law crisis, what do you have at the beginning that you have at the end? Und in der Sonntagsgesetzkrise, was haben wir da am Anfang, was wir auch am Ende haben? Okay, uh, the two temple cleansings, right? Die zwei Tempelreinigungen. The two temple cleansings is a combination of human and divine, right? Und die zwei Tempelreinigungen sind ja eine Kombination vom göttlichen und vom irdischen. Which is the, uh, the living testimony, right? Was dieses lebendige Zeugnis ist. Right? Okay, you need to acknowledge that. I want to make sure everybody's following. I'm just laying out principles here, right? Okay. So, this talking here, she's talking here about a time where the third angel's message, which is the latter rain message, which is the exceeding bright light, is going forward. At the same time, the winds are being held, right? Also hier spricht sie eben von dieser dritten Engelsbotschaft, was auch Spätregensbotschaft ist und auch dieses überaus helle Licht, die eben vorwärts geht und zur gleichen Zeit werden eben diese Winde gehalten. And it's in a time of trouble, right? Und es ist in einer Zeit der Trübsal. Okay. At that time the latter rain or refreshing from the presence of the Lord will come to give power to the loud voice of the third angel. It's the loud cry, right? Also das ist dieser laute Ruf. And prepare the saints to stand in the period when the seven last plagues shall be poured out. So where do we place this point on our line? And where 
no. I, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm talking about this whole scenario here. Where does it begin? It begins at the Sunday law, right? Also, this ganze Szenario, das beginnt zum Sonntagsgesetz. Okay. 1848 is this time of trouble, right? Also, 1848 is this time of trouble. When's are held. And what comes here? Und die Winde werden gehalten. Und was kommt hier? Trouble. The, the latter rain comes, right? Der Spätregen. Okay. And the latter rain, which is the loud cry, is the midnight cry, right? Und der Spätregen, welcher auch der laute Ruf ist, ist der Mitternachtsruf. Okay. And it, it's, a, it's a last warning before the door closes, right? <coughs> because right here, what pours out here? Then what's here here? Seven last plagues. last plagues, which is the wrath of God, right? So we just have a, a, the same illustration as we shown three times yesterday, right? Exactly the same thing, right? And at the temple cleansing, what... What is the temple cleansing illustrated? Und die Tempelreinigung, was stellt die dar? When Christ walks in the temple, what happens? Als Christus in den Tempel gegangen ist, was ist da passiert? Okay, there's two classes separated, right? The, the, the light manifests itself, one class flees, the other class can endure the light and his presence, right? Also es haben sich zwei Klassen offenbart, also als das Licht kam, die einen haben es akzeptiert und die anderen sind davor geflohen. What they showed yesterday, always, two, when the light comes, two classes manifest themselves, one rejects, one accepts, right? Und wenn eben Licht kommt, dann entstehen zwei Klassen und die eine Klasse akzeptiert es und die andere nicht. Everybody see the repeating pattern. Right? Mm. It's, a, it's important that we see that, right? So, now, just go to the, the next quote. And this is the, this is the quote from the, from the early Adventists, or, or early Adventists, from the Adventists <coughs> in the time period just after the First World War, right? And this next is the that is now from these Adventists, Why have I got the oh, oh, let me just close these notes, maybe because I did put something else in there, right? I'll have no quote from education in there. Why is that? <coughs> okay, just look, give me one sec. Let me open it from uh, Telegraph. Telegram, sorry. Right, so yes, let's go to this quote from education. Now, it says that the crown removed from Israel passed successively to the kingdoms of Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, and Rome. God says, It shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him. That time is at hand. Right, so this is talking about this final kingdom when it's set up, right? It says, Today, the signs of the times declare that we are standing on the threshold of great and solemn events. Everything in our world is in agitation. Before our eyes is fulfilling the Saviour's prophecy of the events to precede his coming. Ye shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. Nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. So, CET 111 tells us these signs is the angry nations, right? Und CET 111 sagt uns eben, dass diese Zeichen, dass dieses Zeichen, das sind eben diese zornigen Nationen. Right? Yes. 
We've read that quote a hundred times, with, if I'm not exaggerating, right? And, um, yeah, we have this statue a hundred times, and okay. this is not overdone. So the quote we just read beforehand, right, um, it says, At that time the work of salvation is closed, and trouble will be coming on the earth, and nations will be angry. So, what's the signs that they're seeing there? And, um, in dem Zitat davor sagt es eben also zu der Zeit, wenn eben das Werk der Rettung sich schließt, the, the nations will be angry. dann werden die Nationen eben zornig sein. Okay, so when the nations are angry, what time period is it referring to? According to CET 111, just take your minds back. Und wenn die Nationen zornig sind, auf welche Zeit bezieht sich das? No, 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 the angry nations. That's the point I want to make, right? Yes, literally 1848. She says the angry, na the, the shaking of the powers of Europe is not as some teach the shaking of the heavens, of, of the heavens, but it's the shaking of the angry nations, she says, right? That's what she says, even buchstäblich, 1848, where she says that it's not er ja, bezieht auf diese Erschütterung der Erde, sondern der Himmel und der Erde. Äh, ja, Entschuldige, nein. Dass, sich das eben nicht, dass das nicht die Erschütterung der Himmel und der Erde ist, sondern der Erde. No, shaking of the angry nations. Ja, der zornigen Nationen. Okay, right. So, when you go to, we looked at this recently, go to Revelation 11. Wir haben uns das vor kurzem noch angeschaut. Ich just want to make one point from this. Verse 18. As the nations were angry and thy wrath is come. So what do we see? Right, so the Prefiguring the wrath of God is the nations being angry, right? Also das, was eben vor dem Zorn Gottes ist, das sind die zornigen Nationen. So when Sister White talks about this time of trouble, it's not the time of trouble when the seven last plagues are poured out, but a short time before. And she said it's the angry nation, she's referring to Revelation 11, right? Und wenn Schwester White eben von dieser Zeit der Trübsal spricht, die nicht die sieben letzten Plagen sind, aber zuvor und sie zieht sich da auf die zornigen Nationen, dann zieht sie sich eben auf Offenbarung 11, Vers 18. Right? Okay, I, I, I need acknowledgements, right? There's a lot of thoughts we've got to get here, right? So, the point is that the time of trouble is the angry nations, right? Und der Punkt ist eben, dass die Zeit der Trübsal die zornigen Nationen sind. So, go back to the quote from Education. Und gehen wir zurück zu dem Zitat von Erziehung. And go to the last paragraph. Und wir gehen zum letzten Paragraph. So when those signs begin in Matthew 24, which is the angry nations, it says, angels are now restraining the winds of strife. Right? Exactly the same illustration, right? So das ist genau dieselbe Darstellung. So you can understand that the book of education here, when she's talking about Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome, she's referring it to 1848. This is what she they saw happening, and this is the final rise of this kingdom, right? And when she here spricht von Babylon, Medo-Persia, Griechenland, Rome, then she sees sich eben auf 1848, and das ist das, was sie gesehen haben, wie eben dieses letzte Königreich aufsteht. And, amen? Okay. So... Now, um, now go to the next quote, the one from the Adventists after the First World War. Und jetzt gehen wir zum nächsten Zitat, das von den Adventisten nach dem Ersten Weltkrieg. Okay. So it says, evidences are multiplying on every hand that the plan of salvation is about to close. Great power is to attend in its closing work. What's the closing work? It's the last warning message, right? It's the midnight cry message, right? Okay. 
it says, while the work of salvation is closing, trouble will be coming on the earth and the nations will be angry. This is what we just read in our first quote, right? So they're quoting the quote that we read from earlier writings. So while the work of salvation is closing, trouble will be coming on the earth and the nations will be angry, yet held in check so as not to prevent the work of the third angel. At that time, the latter rain or refreshing from the presence of the Lord will come to give power to the loud voice of the third angel. Over 60 years ago, in referring to the recent European conflict, in a special testimony, Sister White said, I saw Europe just as things were moving to accomplish their desire. There would seemingly be a slacking up once or twice, thus the hearts of the wicked would be relieved and hardened. But the work would not settle down, only seemed to. For the minds of the kings and rulers were intent upon overthrowing each other and minds of the people to get the ascendancy. Probably to this little time of seeming peace, the statement in volume 1, page 268, refers. So they also refer to 1 Testimonies 268, right? And they refer to 1 268. And 1 Testimonies 268 is referring to <coughs> the shaking of the earth followed by the shaking of the heavens in the earth, right? And 1 T 268 bezieht sich eben auf diese Erschütterung der Erde gefolgt von der Erschütterung der Himmel und der Erde. And what's in between the shaking of the earth followed by the shaking of the heavens and the earth? And was ist zwischen dem, also zwischen der Erschütterung der Erde und der Himmel und der Erde? The seeming time of peace, right? Okay, so let's go, go back to where it says, There seemed to be a little time of peace. This time of apparent peace is followed by the final world conflict. So what do they say comes at the end of the time of peace? The final world conflict. Sister White, in referring to it, said, Once more, the inhabitants of the earth were presented before me, and again everything was in the utmost confusion. Strife, war, and bloodshed, with famine and pestilence raged everywhere. Then men's hearts failed them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. So where are they placing the shaking of the heavens and the earth? Und wo platzieren sie eben die Erschütterung der Himmel und der Erde? At, at the, once, the, once you get to the end of the little time of peace, right? Also wenn man zum Ende der kleinen Zeit des Friedens kommt. So the, the mark here, the, this is marking the point where the, the stars are going to fall from heaven, and the, et cetera, et cetera, right? Und sie markieren dann eben, dass die Sterne vom Himmel fallen und so weiter. Okay. It says, then men's hearts failed them for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth. When peace was declared in Europe, men were still hopeful through a league of nations to bring about the reign of peace. But at the final conflict, as the final conflict opens up, all hope is given up. Their hearts will then fail them for fear. This short period between the two great world conflicts is providentially granted God's people to finish the task before them of carrying the last message of mercy to the people. So right here they're saying this little time of peace is the time where the last message has got to go, right? Hier sagen sie eben, dass in dieser Kleinzeit des Friedens muss diese letzte Botschaft um, vorangehen. And warning them of the impending judgments. So they're, they're marking this time, uh, what, what are they referring to this great conflict as? <coughs> that's, what, that's what, okay, the seven last plagues, right? So, let's just put that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Um, and of the nearness of the end. It is at this time 
At which time? Also, to which time? No, that's not what is ready. You're not the little time of peace, right? It is at this time that the latter rain or refreshing from the presence of the Lord will come to give power to the loud voice of the third angel. Where do we see that prefigured? Nine eleven. <coughs> Yeah, no, no, August 11th, is also correct. What, 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 August 11th, great power was given, and was there four winds held? Also, the 11th of September, but the 11th of August 1840 is also correct. Yes. Was there not also a great force Good. That's my whole point, right? Just follow the narrative, what we're doing. I am, that's what I'm saying. And then we write as 85, at that time, the time of trouble, mm -hmm. at the Sunday law, y yes. we've got the latter rain, exceeding bright light goes forth. And you say, where is that prefigured? And I'm saying there. Yeah. So no, that's not, that's not prefiguring it. That's happening there. I'm talking about in history, a prefigure is a type, oh, right? Okay. So the, the, the point I'm making is that they... They end Millerite history, they, they, they mark 1848 as this point where the latter rain comes and the four winds are held, right? And the point is even that the Miller Geschichte is also in 1848 here marked where even the rain is given and the four winds are held. And this, these Adventists, in this time at the end of the. I'll take it down here because it's really. This, this is the World War I, right? So. Um, angry nations and 1848, right? Okay, so this what we just read there in, in in 1840, they had these four angels holding the, the four winds to allow the message to go forward with great power, right? Das, was wir eben auch hier gelesen haben, das war eben auch 1840, dass eben die vier Engel diese vier Winde zurückgehalten haben, damit eben die Botschaft vorwärts gehen kann. Okay, but it's also marked by a point where buildings come down, right? Which is marking the Close of probation. Aber es markiert, es ist auch markiert durch einen Punkt, wo eben Gebäude herunterkommen, und das ist ja das Ende der Gnadenzeit. Okay, so we see both points at the same place, right? We see the end and the beginning at the same point, right? Und wir sehen quasi beide Dinge auf demselben Platz, also den Anfang und das Ende auf derselben Weg machen. Because yesterday we showed this way, Mark, the the last warning message comes, leads you to the closed door, right? Und gestern haben wir das ja auch gezeigt, dass hier die letzte Warnungsbotschaft kommt und das führt dich zur geschlossenen Tür. So the last warning message comes, lead you to the closed door, 9-11, right? Und die letzte Warnungsbotschaft kommt und das führt dich zu einer geschlossenen Tür, der 11. September. But what did we always, what did we always teach about 9-11 when it happened? What happened that straight away? Aber was haben wir immer gelehrt über den 11. September? Was ist, also es, wenn es, als es passiert ist, was ist dann passiert? Ja, es war ein it was loosed, but immediately restrained, right? Also, sie wurden gelöst, aber dann wieder sofort zurückgehalten. Right, so... <coughs> you see two patterns exactly the same, and this one now is the last one in message till the door closes, right? Und das sind eben zwei Muster, genau. Das gleiche und hier sieht man eben auch, wie diese letzte Warnungsbotschaft gegeben wird für die geschlossene Tür hier. Right? Everybody following? Kann jeder folgen? No, it, it, if you're not following, say so, because it's very important that we understand this. It's just, we're taking this pattern that we laid out yesterday and one minute Sister White is putting it here at the beginning 
and then they're understanding that it's like that. It's just the same thing, time of trouble, time of peace, right? Wenn ihr es nicht versteht, dann bitte sagt das, dass wir nehmen einfach das Muster, was wir gestern eben ausgelegt haben und Schwester Weid markiert es eben einmal hier und einmal hier und es ist einfach einmal die Zeit des Friedens und einmal die Zeit des Trübsal. It's, it's like um, this quote that she has, right? She says that um, what God's people fail to do in a time of peace, they will do in a time of trouble. Yes. So it gives them enough power to do it in a time of peace yes. to fail yes. to a certain degree. And then they come to a time of trouble, he yes. gives them again power because yes. they need it and then they have to do it in a time of peace. Yes. But in, in, their, in their time, right? Mm. In their time, they, they, they saw the persecutions that came in the First World War, right? And they saw that the Lord holds the winds here to allow them to get this last message. And they think when the next one comes, that, that said, it's all over, right? And um, Schwester Weid had auch dieses Zitat, wo sie eben sagt, dass dieses Werk, was eben die Gemeinde versagt, in der Zeit des Friedens zu tun, das muss sie dann in der Zeit der Trübsal machen. Und um, Punkt, der gemacht wurde, ist, dass eben Kraft gegeben wird, damit sie dieses Werk tun können. Aber sie versagen dann halt in gewisser Weise und kommen hier dann aber nochmal Kraft, dieses Werk zu tun. Was no, 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 no. Uh, that's what he said, yeah, yes, but, yeah. okay. Was eben war in der Zeit they, saw the time, they saw the persecution in here. Yeah. Und was aber dann war in der Zeit eben diesen Adventisten nach dem Ersten Weltkrieg, sie haben eben erkannt diese Zeit hier und haben dann eben ja, verstanden, dass sie diese Botschaft eben hier geben müssen und dass dann hier dieser letzte Weltkonflikt ist. Okay, go, go, go to Daniel chapter. Okay, so let's go to Daniel chapter 7. And the, the point that I want us to see that it's, it's no accident, right? that we took all those things to deal with the shaking of the heavens and the earth and we put them here. It's, it's no accident. It, it, it's, it's just that we haven't understood things the way that the Lord is trying to show us things now. Right? And this is even kein Zufall, that we all these things that we have on this shaking of the heavens and the earth, that we have here placed here. And the Second World War, right? Who, if you take the, if you just deal with Jews, right? What, what were they illustrating? And in Zweiten Weltkrieg, the Juden, what have they dargestellt? No, I don't. Okay, yeah. So they were God's faithful people. Okay, so so God's people. Got, okay, so that, that's what I'm saying. You got to be be good, careful when you use that term, God's people. What do you mean by that? Also. Okay. But that's, but that's not what I'm asking. Yes, the servants keep us. But I'm saying, what are they representing? Also, what have they dargestellt? No, you're just doing going the same route now. It, uh, so the the Jews that have rejected Christ are God's people. No, but you're asking what they represent. Uh, so I'm asking what they represent. That's the it's the question. It's the right question I'm asking. They represent a people that said, "Let His blood be upon us," yes. right? Also, sie stellen ein Volk da, das eben gesagt hat, lass sein Blut auf uns sein. Okay, they represent a people that's rejected Christ, right? <laughs> sie stellen ein Volk da, was eben Christus verworfen hat. Okay, so, the Holocaust, what is it really representing? Und der uh, Holocaust, das stellt der uh, Wirklichkeit da. Sorry? Judgment upon them. Yes, the seven last plagues. Let, let his blood be upon us. Was the seven last plagues, right? Okay, and we also have it, you know, and when you take the big fractal, in the, in the line of Pharaoh, you, you have these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plagues here, right? Now, 
when you, when you have the seven plagues here, what do we see repeated at the seventh plague? Und wenn wir die sieben letzten Plagen hier haben, was sehen wir dann, was sich wiederholt in der siebten Plage? No, okay, yeah, yes, that's true, but that's not what I'm trying to ask. Okay, this is the last message, what would this be? Also, wenn das die letzte Botschaft ist, was wäre dann das? Right, so he would be saying, it is what? Okay, right? Was wurde gesagt? Das ist das Ende der Gnadenzeit. Christ, Christ would be saying. Und Christus würde dann sagen, es ist getan. Okay. So what do we see at the seventh plague? Und was sehen wir zur letzten siebten Plage? Right. It is done, right? Auch dasselbe, also es ist getan. Right. So this point I want to get. All the things that we thought were there, we've been or, or many of the things that we thought were there, we've been taking them and putting them here, right? Rightfully so. Und viele Dinge, die wir eben standen haben, dass sie hier sind, die haben wir dann hierhin platziert und das war auch richtig so. Christ Object Lessons 412. Das ist die Gleichnisse 412. Right? Christ Object Lessons 412 has nothing to do with one year, Margaret. It's the one that says that uh, it's at midnight, it's in a crisis when character is revealed, right? Also, das ist das Zitat, wo es eben sagt, es ist in einer Krise, wo sich der Charakter offenbart. Okay, and it's when does it come? It, it will be seen at, at, in the last sentence, it's at the close of probation, right? Und das eben zum Ende der Gnadenzeit. So, the midnight cry, this is the point I was making yesterday, you have the midnight cry here at the close of probation, going forward, right? Und wir haben eben, das war der Punkt, den wir gestern gemacht haben, dass wir Mitternachtsruf hier haben und das Ende der Gnadenzeit eben hier vorwärts geht. Which is this point. Was auch dieser Punkt hier ist. Right, which parallels this point. Das parallel ist mit diesem Punkt. Right? So, you need to see it in both the time of peace and also in the time of trouble, right? In order to fulfill what the Lord is trying to show us. Und wir müssen das eben in der Zeit des Friedens, also auch in der Zeit der Trübsal sehen, um das eben zu erfüllen, was der Herr uns zeigen möchte. Okay. Was Marc gesagt hat, am Ende da ist der Mitternachtsruf, das Ende der Gnadenzeit und von da aus geht der Mitternachtsruf vorwärts. Das ist der laute Ruf sozusagen. Hier meinst du? Genau. Also das ist Ende der Gnadenzeit. Das ist like, like October 22. Okay. Der Mitternachtsruf und von da aus geht dann der Mitternachtsruf vorwärts. Okay. Als Okay, now go to Daniel 7. Let's go to Daniel 7. And verse 1. And verse 1. Now, Daniel 7 is just these four, same four kingdoms as Sister White mentions in uh, the book of education, right? Und Daniel 7, das spricht ja über diese selben Königreiche, was auch Schwester Weid in diesem Zitat von Erziehung erwähnt. But the difference is, it's on a smaller fractal, because this is specifically dealing with the Sunday law crisis, right? Aber der Unterschied ist eben, dass das auf einem kleineren Fraktal ist, denn das handelt sich eben spezifisch um die Sonntagsgesetzkrise. For instance, Education, still Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, and Rome, where Christ comes, right? Also, das Zitat von Erziehung, das spricht eben von Babylon, Middle Persia, Griechenland und Rom in diesem großen Fraktal. Oh, okay, but in Daniel 7, it's dealing with specifically the Sunday law crisis, right? Aber in Daniel 7 geht es eben besonders um diese Sonntagsgesetzkrise. Okay, so you have the, the lion, the bear, the leopard, and then you had the, um, the dragon, thanks. Okay? Which is on, 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 which is being illustrated down here, right? So we have the lion, 
there. Black part, and then here. Also wir haben dann hier Löwen, den Bären, Leoparden und den Drachen, was dann eben auch hier dargestellt ist. Okay. So, and so just go, Daniel 7 and verse 1. Daniel 7, verse 1. It says, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream of visions upon his head, on his, of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the murders. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. What does he see? And what see he here? sees the four winds. It's the sign, right? Also er sieht die vier Winde, was das Zeichen But ist. we know when those four winds begin to strive, what does the Lord do? Oops. He holds them, right? Eben diese vier Winde, ja, zu wehen beginnen, dann haltet sie eben der Herr. It says, and four great beasts came up from the sea, right? So, um, now, when we go to Revelation 13, wenn wir zu Offenbarung 13 gehen, okay, Revelation 13 is dealing with the 1260, right? Until, until the, until the, is dealing with the 1260 until the beast gets a deadly wound, right? And Offenbarung 13 behandelt eben die 1260 bis eben dieses Tier diese tödliche Wunde bekommt. Right, so just let's read Revelation 13, 1 and 2. Offenbarung 13, Vers 1 und 2. I stood upon the sand, the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Where is it, this beast coming out of? So von wo kommt dieses Tier auf? Out the sea. Where did the beast come out of in Revelation in Daniel 7? Aus dem Meer. Und wo kamen diese Tiere in Daniel 7? Out the sea, right? Auch aus dem Meer. It says, I saw a beast rise up of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. The beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, his feet were as the feet of a bear, had his, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, seed, and great authority. Same four beasts, right? Also das sind die vier Tiere. And if you were to read the next verse in the Bible, it talks about him getting a deadly wound, right? Und der nächste Vers, was beide spricht dann über diese tödliche Wunde. So, in Revelation 17 in verse 1, it's talking about that deadly wound, right? Und in Offenbarung 17 in Vers 1, da spricht es über diese tödliche Wunde. But it's talking about the seven last plagues, right? Aber spricht eben über diese sieben letzten Plagen. Okay, because he says, uh, I'm going to explain to you the, the judgment at the end of the world. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you back and show this deadly wound. Right? Und was eben dann gesagt wird, das zeigt einem das Gericht am Ende, aber er bringt ihn dann zurück eben zu diesem Gericht der Hure. So, at the, here you have the 1260. Right? Und hier haben wir die 1260. Oh, excuse me, I'm on the wrong, right, let's take that off here. Here you have the 1260. So what do we have here? The deadly wound. We're right here, right? Okay, so if we understand it principally on this October 22nd, right, the, the last warning message begins to go forward, right, in a time of peace. So all, all repeating patterns, right? So when you get to the end here, the, the, the deadly wound is prefiguring the seven last plagues, which is... 9-11, right? Wenn wir hierhin kommen, dann schattet eben diese tödliche Wunde, diese sieben letzten Plagen raus, was der 11. September ist. But what does it say after, what about the deadly wound when it receives it? Aber was sagt es eben über diese tödliche Wunde, also wenn sie es erhält? It says the deadly wound was healed. Es eben diese tödliche Wunde geheilt. Right, so it goes from a deadly wound to deadly wound to be healed. Second Sunday law, right? Also es geht von einer tödlichen Wunde dem, dass die tödliche Wunde geheilt wird und das ist das zweite Sonntagsgesetz. Okay. So, we know that at the end of the 1260, the deadly wound is prefiguring the seven last plagues, right? Und wir wissen am Ende der 1260, dass 
diese tödliche Wunde, sie schattet eben voraus diese sieben letzten Plagen. Right? So, when you get here, this is marking the point where the seven last plagues would come, right? Und wenn wir hier hinkommen, dann ist es eben hier, dass diese sieben letzten Plagen vorwärts gehen. At the end of the line, the bear, the leopard and the dragon. Und dann mit den Löwen, den Bären, den Leoparden und Drachen. Okay. At the end. Also am Ende von diesen vier Mächten. Okay, so go, go back to Daniel. Uh, Let's go in your Bibles to Daniel 7. Verse 8. It says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Behold, in his horn were the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. This is the 1260, right? That's the 1260. And it's the fourth beast. And this is the fourth tier. Yes? Okay. And what's the very next thing you see in verse 9? And what is the next thing you see in verse 9? The clause of probation, right? Where the e he's going to execute judgment upon this kingdom. It's the end of the Gnadenzeit, where he's going to execute judgment. Ausübt über diesem Königreich. Okay, so the first point I want you to get to see is that all, all four beasts are representing the 1260 on one level, right? Und der Punkt ist eben, dass all diese vier Tiere, sie stellen eben auch die 1260 da in einem Level. Right? But, so when you have all four beasts there, it represents 1260. Und wenn wir all diese vier Tiere haben, dann stellt das diese 1260 da. Revelation 13, right? Offenbarung 13. Takes you down till it gets a deadly wound. Und das bringt dich herab, dass es eben eine tödliche Wunde bekommt. But the fourth beast also represents 1260, right? Aber das vierte Tier, das stellt eben auch eine 1260 da. Right? <lacht> Taking you down to the point where it gets a deadly wound, right? And this will lead to the point where it gets a deadly wound. Okay, so now go to now go to Matthew 24, because Matthew 24 is the signs that they see marking where the winds are held, right? And let's go to Matthew 24. That's where it's marked. 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 Matthew 24 and verse 6. Matthew 24 and verse 6. It says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the... Beginnings. Beginning. They're the beginning, right? So this is the Anfang der Wien. And the be the beginning is the uh, is marking this point where the, the the winds are held, right? This is the angry nations, right? Okay. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll um, go now to Micah chapter four. Because we see that the statue, right, which begins with Babylon, right, is marking the Sunday law crisis. And you also have this quote in 14 MR 91.3 that says, When Nebuchadnezzar set up the golden image, it's parallel in the Sunday law crisis, right? And we have also this Zitat from 14 MR 91, paragraph 3. Wenn eben Nebukadnezar diese Statue aufstellt, dann ist das das Sonntagsgesetz. Okay, so when this, when they begin to set up this final kingdom, it's marking the Sunday law crisis, right? Nebuchadnezzar. Wenn eben dieses finale Königreich ja aufgestellt wird, mit markiert es die Sonntagsgesetzkrise, also Nebukadnezar. Micah chapter 4 and verse 9, 
from the Micha 4 and verse 9. It says, Now why dost thou cry out loud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counsellor perish? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. What's happening? And let's just see it here. The birth pangs, right? What's here? Be in pain and labour to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now, when? When our travails begin to happen, now shalt thou go forth out of the city, thou shalt dwell in the field. And thou shalt go even to Babylon, and there shall thou be delivered. Right? So in order to be delivered, where do you have to get taken to? <coughs> Also, sorry, can you repeat? In order to be delivered, where must you go? Also, um eben befreit zu werden, wohin musst du da gehen? Into Babylon, right? Nach Babylon. Okay, so, the point is, how long, when they went into Babylon, how long did they go in there for? Und als sie nach Babylon gegangen sind, wie lange waren sie dort? 70 years, right? 70 Jahre. Okay, so, when this begins, it's marking the... 1260, it's also the 70, right? Okay, the next quote just confirms that she parallels the 1260 years of people persecution to the 70 years in Babylon, right? Und in dem nächsten Zitat ist bestätigt auch, dass dann sie setzt eben diese 1260 von der päpstlichen Verfolgung parallel mit den 70 Jahren. So, Matthew 24, the signs, is marking the Sunday law when you go into captivity, right? Right? Real, real simple. Just putting pieces of a puzzle together. Right, so in Matthew 24, what he does is he lays out these points to do with the birth pangs, and then he gives you the, another sign in verse 15. Und in Matthäus 24, da legt es eben diese Zeichen aus, was diese Wurzwehen sind. Because he uses these words, when ye therefore, what does therefore mean? Dann gibt es noch ein anderes Zeichen. Matthäus 24, Vers 15. Okay, um, also wir sind jetzt in Matthäus 24 und Vers 15. Und okay, so the Lord... Da gibt er ein anderes Zeichen. No, it's not another yeah. sign. <laughs> he, he's, he's, he's laying out the points and he lays on you that this other point where he's just illustrating the same thing, right? Und er hat eben zuvor diese Putzwehen eben ausgelegt und gibt dann eben einen weiteren Punkt dazu. Okay, so, because he says, when ye therefore, what does therefore mean? Und was bedeutet... Yeah. For, for this reason, right? Also for all the reasons that we've just spoke about, right? When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. So the abomination of desolation is speaking about the same point where the wars and rumors of wars, these birth pangs begin, right? Wo eben diese Kriege und Kriegsgerüchte, also diese Wehen beginnen. Okay, so when we go to Daniel 11, 31. Und wenn wir zu Daniel 11 und Vers 1 gehen. 31. Oh, Vers 31. <coughs> It says, An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination and make it desolate. So according to Daniel 11:31. Who's the abomination it maketh desolate? Gemäß Daniel 11 und Vers 31 wäre es eben dieses Kreuel. The papacy. From 538 to 1798, right? Von 538 bis 1798. So when you see, it's just, not, it's just exactly the same as what, when you take Daniel 7, right? And Revelation 13, it's showing you this the same truth, right? So when you see this kingdom coming out of the sea, right, and beginning to be set up, it's marking the same point as the abomination of desolation has been set up, right? Okay, so 
dasselbe wie wenn eben dieses Kreuz der Verwüstung. According to Revelation 13, right? Wie jetzt gemäß Offenbarung 13. Okay, so. So Matthew 24, the birth pangs begin the 1260, right? So in Matthäus 24, da beginnen eben diese Geburtswehen der 1260. Okay. And a second witness is Daniel 12 and verse 11. And ein zweiter Zeuge ist auch noch Daniel 12 und Vers 11. Because it says, and from the time that the daily shall be taken away, 508, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, 538, there shall be 1,290 days. Right? So the extra 30 days are from 508 to 538. Right? Also diese extra 30 Tage oder Jahre, das ist eben von 508 bis 538. <coughs> Okay, so. <coughs> okay, so from the time that the daily is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there'll be 1290, right? Von der Zeit eben, wo das tägliche hinweggenommen wird und das Kreuz der Verwüstung aufgestellt wird, sind 1290. So when the abomination is desolate set up till the end is 1260. This is 30, right? 30 plus 1260 is 1290, right? Und von der Zeit eben, wo wird, bis 1290 So two witnesses from the book of Daniel that tells you the abomination of desolation is the papal rule from 538 to 1798, right? Das sind zwei Zeugen, dass eben diese der eben diese Herrschaft ist von bis Okay, but Sister White takes the sign of the abomination of desolation in agreement with Christ and she mingles it with something that was happening in the, their time, right? Aber Schwester Weid nimmt eben dieses Zeichen des Kreuzes der Verwüstung und in Übereinstimmung mit Christus vermischt sie es mit etwas, was eben in ihrer Zeit passiert ist. Okay, because it had to fulfill in the time of the disciples, because he told them that this is what you're going to see, right? Das musste sich ja auch in der Zeit der Jünger eben erfüllen, denn er hat ihnen ja gesagt, das ist das, was ihr eben sehen werdet. So, the destruction of Jerusalem, what does it represent? Und die Zerstörung von Jerusalem, was stellt es da? Yes, but that's not what I'm looking for. What, Christ mingled the two events. What were the two events? Okay, so the destruction of Jerusalem marks the second coming, right? Also die Zerstörung von Jerusalem markiert auch das zweite Kommen. What has to prefigure the second coming? Und was muss eben vorausgeschattet werden oder vor diesem zweiten Kommen sein? Yeah the, yeah, the time of trouble, the angry nations, yeah, right? So what makes the nations angry right here? When they make the abomination of desolation, right? Okay, so before the destruction of Jerusalem, what has to take place? The angry nations. Which is the 1260. From Cestius, because let's read this quote, right? Jetzt lesen wir dieses Zitat. Jesus declared to the listening disciples the judgments that were to fall upon apostate Israel, especially the retributive vengeance that would come upon them for the rejection and crucifixion of the Messiah. Unmistakable signs would precede the awful climax. The dreaded hour would come suddenly and swiftly. And the Savior warned as follows, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. And let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. When the idolatrous standards of the Romans should be set up on the holy ground would extend some furlongs outside the city walls, then the followers of Christ were to find safety in flight. Cestius, right? Is it Cestius? Yes? 
Okay, so um, just let me wrap this up. So, destruction of Jerusalem. Which is also the second coming, right? And what has the prefigure? That is the angry nations, right? Which is the 1260. And the 1260 marked by the abomination of desolation, right? And the 1260 is even markiert durch diesen Gräuel der Verwüstung. Right? So we know at the end of the 1260, Revelation 17 is marking the seven last plagues, right? And we wissen eben das Ende der 1260. And Revelation 17. It's marking the seven last plagues. Okay, so Sister White takes the abomination desolation and marks it with Cestius. Who destroyed Jerusalem? Titus, right? Titus. How long between there and there? Three and a half years, right? You have a perfect illustration, right? It's just shown us the exactly the same illustration from two different histories, right? It also makes much more sense because, like, you know, we had this thought of placing Titus at the midnight cry, and you always had this confusing thing of what. But it is there somehow, right? How do you place it to succeed there? Yeah, but okay, it, but, it, but it's, it's a different illustration, right? But it's not really the destruction of Jerusalem no. in, in, in this sense. No, no, no. Okay, and it's not really the midnight cry either. No. You get my point? Right, because the triumphal entry and the midnight cry are leading down to the point where the midnight cry and the triumphal entry is fulfilled, right? So we have Titus in a certain sense, also here, but it's not the destruction of Jerusalem. Der Mitternachtsruf und dieser triumphale Einzug führen ja hinab bis zum Ende. No, no, no. The leading down to the point where it's going to be perfectly fulfilled. Also sie führen hinab zu diesem Punkt, wo es eben dann perfekt erfüllt wird. Okay. Because this is what we understand. The triumphal entry is the second coming, right? Und der triumphale Einzug ist ja das zweite Kommen. The midnight cry is the close of probation. Und der Mitternachtsruf ist auch das Ende der Gnadenzeit. Okay. But we can also... Put the triumphal entry and the midnight cry, they're based upon Millerite and Christ line, right? Wir können auch den triumphalen Einzug und den Mitternachtsruf auch hier am Anfang platzieren, gemäß der Linie von der Milleriten und von der Christen. Okay, the shaking of the heavens and the earth is at the seventh plague when Christ says it is done. Und die Erschütterung der Himmel und der Erde ist eben zur siebten Plage, wo eben der Herr sagt, es ist getan. But at the beginning of the seven plagues, he also says it is done. <laughs> right? You see the pattern, right? He's trying to show you something that there is an event that's marked there that's very important for us to see, but it's leading down to the perfect fulfillment at the end. Right? <laughs> Führt an eben hinab, wo es dann perfekt am Ende erfüllt wird. Jonah, when he comes out of the belly, is filled with the Holy Spirit. What does he say? Und wenn Jonah aus dem Bauch kommt und gefüllt ist mit dem Heiligen Geist, was sagt er? 40 days, then comes the, the judgment, right? Also in 40 Tagen kommt das Gericht. Okay, still some things we've got to, got to grasp from all this, right? Und da gibt es noch immer Dinge, die wir verstehen müssen aus dem. Okay, so... Let's see if we can get this last point. In Matthew 24, right? Verse 20. So what I want you to see is that 
in, in one sense, the four kingdoms of Babylon to Rome represent the whole time of trouble to the end, right? Also in einem Sinne, diese vier Königreiche von Babylon bis Rom, sie markieren diese ganze Zeit der Trübsal bis zum Ende. But you can also see that on a smaller scale they represent the 1260. Aber wir können auch sehen, dass in einem kleineren Fraktal stellen sie auch die 1260 dar. But in this illustration here, you have another 1260. Aber in dieser Darstellung hier haben wir wieder eine 1260. Hier, right? Das ist die 1260 hier. Right, so there's a 1260 within the 1260. Also es ist eine 1260 in der 1260. Right, and you see the same in Matthew 24, because when you begin Matthew 24, it's marking the 1260 begins with the abomination of desolation, right? Und dasselbe sehen wir auch in Matthäus 24 und es beginnt ja hier mit diesem Gräuel der Verwüstung, diese 1260. Right, but when you come down to Matthew 24 and verse 20, Aber wenn wir jetzt herunterkommen zu Matthäus 24 und Vers 20. But pray ye, pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So when, are you, when, is it, when is it you cannot flee anymore? Also wann ist es, dass du nicht mehr fliehen kannst? At the winter, right, which is the close of probation, right? Im Winter, was das Ende der Gnadenzeit ist. For then, what's going to happen when the winter comes? Also was passiert, wenn der Winter kommt? Then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of this world to this time nor shall ever shall be. So what's it pointing to? Seven last plagues, right? Okay. You can see it. Because it says which was not, sorry. It says which was not since the beginning, right? Yeah, yes. Because he says at the beginning of the chapter all these are the beginning of sorrow. And he says basically, now comes the tribulation that was not like at the beginning. E it's, a, it's a difference. E e e e yes, right? right. You, you just explain in German, just do it. Also, sagt er hier dann in Vers 21, es soll eine Trübsalzeit sein, welches seit Beginn der Welt nicht gab. Und um, in Matthäus 24, am Anfang, ich glaube, Vers 7 oder so, sagt er, um, Die ist alles ist der Beginn der Wehen. Ja, er sagt dann, aber hier ist eine Rückzahl, die nicht so war wie von dem Be Beginn an. Das heißt, es ist eine, es ist eine, es ist eine schlimme, also eine größere Manifestation davon, es ist eine andere Rückzahl, nicht okay. so wie am Anfang. Okay. So, and when you, when you go to Daniel 12, which is the close of probation, you see the exact same language, right? Wenn wir zu Daniel 12 gehen, das ist das Ende der Gnadenzeit, ist, sehen wir dieselbe Sprache. Okay. And Sister Weiss says very clearly that this, this uh, great tribulation is the 1260, right? And we're not going to read it, it's in the quote, it's in the notes there, right? But, so in the 1260, in verse 22, Matthew 24, verse 22, also Matthäus 24 and verse 22, it says, and unless those days, except those days, should be shortened, right? So when it says that, it's speaking about this 1260. There's a period in here that has to be shortened, right? When it even sagt, es sei dann, dass diese Zeit verkürzt wird, dann spricht es eben über diese Zeitperiode, wo eben die Zeit verkürzt wird. Okay, so abomination of desolation sets up 1260, right? And then it comes to this time that uh, excuse me. For then shall be great tribulation, right? Winter comes, right? And then comes this to this time period where it even then says, "Then then shall be a great time of trouble." And winter is marking the close of probation, just like the. The Adventists, after the First World War, they also think that this point is the close of probation, right? Und der Winter markiert eben das Ende der Gnadenzeit, so wie auch die Adventisten nach dem Ersten Weltkrieg gedacht haben, dass das eben dann das Ende der Gnadenzeit ist. Because great tribulation is going to come, right? Denn große Trübsal kommt dann. Which is prefigured in the seven last plagues. Was die sieben letzten Plagen vorausschattet. You, you see that? Yes. So we want you to see these things on two different levels, right? Und es möchte uns eben diese Dinge 
auf zwei verschiedenen Leveln zeigen. Okay. Now, okay, a whole bunch more things I can lay on there. It's probably too much now, so I'll leave it and I'll continue this tomorrow. And I'll we'll also clarify Ayla's troubled mind tomorrow, right? Just clarify that um, the time to be shortened, I, I didn't quite get it. I'm saying the, the, the abomination of desolation set up here at 1260. Yes. Whole time, yes. right? So. Das Kreuz der Verwüstung wird hier aufgestellt und dann haben wir der 1260 hier die ganze Zeit. Because the 1260 is the Sunday law crisis until the final review, right? Und dann die 1260 ist ja die Sonntagsgesetzkrise bis zur finalen Untersuchung. Hence, one, two, three, four beasts in the 1260. Und deswegen haben wir vier Tiere in der 1260. But the fourth beast, which is here. The, the question's already answered for you. That type yes, that's what I'm saying. So, and this this is the great tribulation, except that the time be shortened. So, speaking about this time period here, there's a time period in here that's going to be cut short. Okay, I understood that. You didn't quite follow that. Oh, that, that's the point I'm making. Okay, I understood that. And that's what I'm saying. Hier in diesen Versen auf diese 1260 und das bedeutet diese 1260, also eine Zeit hierin muss eben gekürzt werden. Also so, so we used to take that and put it here and say, this was the period that was cut short. I'm just clarifying that point, right? Und wir haben halt sonst immer gesagt, dass das diese Zeit ist, die gekürzt werden muss. Yeah, yes, you don't know what ways in the 1260, one of them not cut short, but on the other one. Ask the Lord on your knees. He might give you the answer to that, right? No, no, I'm just, I, I don't know the answer to that. that that's, the Lord's thoughts are not my thoughts, right? But if I give you, I give you a thought that why I would think the Lord puts words in a certain place because he wants you to see a specific thing at this point, but he doesn't want you to see it at another point, right? Und ähm, ja, meine Antwort wäre dazu, dass eben der Herr platziert Worte ja, zu bestimmten Zeitpunkten, weil er möchte dir eben etwas zu sehen geben zu diesem Zeitpunkt, aber nicht zu einem anderen vielleicht. For instance, right? When you've got the 1260, and the 1260 has been represented in so many different places, right? Und zum Beispiel, wenn wir die 1260 haben, und die ist ja dargestellt auf so vielen verschiedenen Plätzen. If you took that cut short, and every time you saw the 1260, it would cause huge confusion, right? Wenn wir diese Verkürzung eben überall dann anwenden, wo die 1260 ist, dann wäre große Verwirrung. So he wants you first to identify where he's put in this 1260 and then sticks it in there, right? So it's keeping it specific to a specific point in time, right? Also er möchte, dass wir zuerst eben herausfinden, über welche 1260 es spricht oder wo diese 1260 markiert ist und wo dann, also Und dann stellt sich eben heraus, wo dann diese Zeit der Verkürzung okay. ist. But that's just my sanctified way of thinking. That might not be correct, right? That's me just taking a, a logical approach to looking at that, right? Aber das ist halt jetzt, wie ich denke, also, ja. Okay, so, the, the point is, just to, my, my, my last thought is, this way mark, is absolutely perfectly there as we had it, right? It's just some of the things that we'd stuck there, we were mingling two thoughts together and we've had to remove some of them to put them in the right place, right? Und diese Wegmarke hier, die ist eben ja, völlig perfekt etabliert und ja, bestätigt. Nur wir haben halt damals einfach sehr viele Dinge hierhin platziert, was wir eben jetzt wieder trennen müssen, also und ja. Right? We get the point I'm making. Uh, all right, but we'll come back to this tomorrow, and I'll put some more evidences in place, and then we will try to see if there's some points that we are not understanding from that. We will morgen dann noch mal zurückgehen und das eben noch besser anschauen mit mehr Beweisen. All right, let's close it.
mir so Vater, ich will dir danken für dein Wort. Our Father in heaven, I want to thank you for your word. Und bitte hilf uns auch, dass wir immer dieses gegenwärtige Werk, das wir zu tun haben, erkennen. And please help us that we always recognize the present work that we ought to do. Und bitte hilf uns auch jetzt über diesen Tag hinweg, dass wir um, in deinen Satzungen wandeln. And please help us also that we uh, walk, uh, <coughs> work throughout this day in your statutes. Bitte hilf uns, dass wir heute zulassen, dass die Wahrheit in uns wirken kann. And please help that uh, today we might allow that your truth might work in us. Dass wir unsere Herzen nicht verhärten davor. That we do not harden our heart, hearts against it. And segne du auch alle unsere Geschwister. And please bless also all our uh, brothers and sisters. Und hilf uns, dass wir noch mehr eins werden im Glauben. And please help us to become more unified uh, in our faith. In Jesu Namen. In Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen.